Hello, this video will demonstrate how to estimate the slope of a tangent line at a specific point on a curve and we'll look at two curves, a polynomial curve and a trigonometric curve. Now to me the most important thing in doing this is understanding what you're doing. All right, In calculus when we find the slope of a tangent line at a point on a curve, what we're really finding is the instantaneous rate of change. And in physics, you may have talked about instantaneous velocity or instant, instantaneous acceleration, right? Depending on what you're working on, that slope represents the instantaneous rate of change. For now, for the estimation part, the procedure that we're going to use is quite simple. You're going to get a point on the curve, and you're going to say, find the slope at this point on the curve. And what we're going to do, because we don't, you know, to find the slope, we think of a line, right? And so we're going to use a secant, find two points on the secant, and calculate slope. So we need to find two points. So they're going to give you an x value. All right. So you determine, given the function that they have for you, you're going to find the y value, and that's one point. Choose another x value very, 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 very close to that x value that they gave you. And don't be shy about getting close. Determine the point for that new x value. And now comes the easy part, just calculate slope and estimate. So of course the best thing to do is, let's look at an example. So I'm using GeoGebra, and I've graphed a trinomial 2x cubed plus x squared minus 22x plus 24. Now you can see as you travel along this curve, if we think about this slope, if we think about a tangent, right, slope is very positive. Right? It's still positive but lessening, still positive but getting smaller. And at this maximum value, that slope will be zero. We'll have a horizontal tangent line. Now my slope is getting negative and so on. Slope of zero again. And again, you'll look at that much later, uh, most likely. Uh, you know, certainly later in your calculus education. But let's say we want to estimate the slope at x equals negative 1. Again, you're not always going to have to draw this out, but it helps to see it. So again, if I imagine that tangent line Right, and I've got this other point here. Right, I'm, it's not really a tangent line, right? So what we want to do again, we're going to find that point, and as you can see here, when I put negative one into my function, the y value will be 45. So one point we have is negative one, 45. Again, in the procedure, we're going to choose an x value very, 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 very close to negative one. You can see here, this point is really far. So notice what happens as we move this point very close to A. And I'm going to put our slope here, right? And we're getting close, and we're getting close. And notice the minute changes in that secant. It's still a secant. We're getting very close. And again, because GeoGebra is the way it is, I can never get really, really close. Um, let's see if I do this. Maybe. Right? What if I sort of spread this out a bit? Maybe I can get closer. All right. I can get closer. All right. I'm getting pretty close. And you can see that the slope tends to be negative 18. So my estimation would be negative 18. Let's do the calculations and see if this agrees with what we see here. Okay, so now we're ready to do our calculations for the estimating of the slope 
at a point on a curve. All right? Don't forget what you're doing. So we already know from before that we should get 45 when I put negative 1 into this function, but let's just review that. So I want to find, again, I want to estimate the slope of the tangent when x is negative 1. All right. So right, remember to use your brackets. We're just going to substitute negative 1. All right, and we know negative 1 cubed is negative 1, so this gives us negative 2. Negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 22 times negative 1 is positive 22, plus 24. All right, I add my positives, 22 and 1 is 23. 23 and 24 is 47, minus 2, 45. So our calculations work, our match, all right? And we're, so that's one point. Now remember, in order to find slope, we, want, we have to have two points, right? So again, we're going to get an x value really, really, really close to negative 1. You can either do that coming from the left, excuse me, coming from the right or coming from the left, all right? I'm going to come from the left, and so that's going to be negative 1.0001. I'm going to use this, all right? Okay, now let's see what happens when we put this into our function as our input. Now again, because you have a calculator, there is no reason that you should be rounding. So when I do this, I get approximately 45 point zero one and it gets I get seven nine nine five I'm gonna put seven nine nine five okay so my other point is this now a quick check <laughs> let's say for instance you were instead of putting negative 1.001, you put positive, right? And, you know, a simple mistake, no problem. I would hope that you'd realize that your y value should be really, really close to 45 as well, as you can see in the graph. So let's say, for instance, instead you got something different. Always use your brain while you're doing this. The calculator only gives you numbers that relate to what you put in. So if you put in wrong numbers, it's going to give you the correct answer based on those wrong numbers. So just always keep in mind what you're doing and get, have, an, have an idea of what the answer should be. Okay? Now the last part is to calculate our slope. Remember, slope is change in y. Right? Change in our vertical minus 45 divided by our change in x. Again, don't forget if you have negative numbers, it's a good idea to put them in brackets. Now again, we've seen when we looked at grapher, we saw that our slope should be pretty close to negative 18. Let's see what we get. So I'm getting negative 17.8 nine nine four nine nine eight which I'll say is negative 18 so remember what this negative 18 represents this represents our estimation of the slope of the tangent line at x equals negative 1 now how could we be more accurate instead of negative 1.001 I could have used negative 1.00001, and I'd get closer. All right, so that's why I said don't be shy and getting close to negative 1. Because you have your calculators, there is no reason 
to round this. If we rounded this to 45.02, we're not going to get as accurate of an answer. So be very thoughtful about that. So let's look at a trig function and do the same thing. So we have f of x equals, as you can see, 2 times the cosine of theta minus pi over 4. All right, and I would like to estimate the, uh, the slope of the tangent at 3 pi over 2. All right, so here I have that. 3 pi over 2 is this point A. I'm choosing another point B, and obviously that's a little silly. Remember, we want to get B as close as we possibly can to A. And notice how that secant changes. And it looks like our slope is close to about 1.38. OK, let's see if algebraically we can get close to that. OK, so remember that our first step is to find one point, And we want the slope at 3 pi over 2. So I'm going to put 3 pi over 2 into my trig function. Make sure that you are in radians, right? So 3 pi divided by 2 minus pi divided by 4. Right? And I will take the cosine of that times 2. Did I do minus? Hmm, something looks a little interesting because, right, I know that my y value should be negative. Let me try that again. All right, so 3 pi divided by 2, okay, minus pi divided by 4, okay, no problem. And take the cosine of that. Huh. Okay. Let me use brackets here. Okay. So I'll do a bracket here. 3 pi divided by 2 minus pi divided by 4. Close brackets. Uh, I'm getting the same thing. Very interesting. Uh, I will be right back and we'll figure this out. Okay, I figured it out. So with this online ca with this uh, computer calculator, I just put 3 pi. I assumed it meant multiplication, but it doesn't. We have to actually say multiply. All right, so let's do this again. Pi divided by 4. That makes a lot more sense. We're going to take the cosine. Woohoo! All right, times 2. And we get negative 1.414, which basically is negative square root 2 over 2. As I am doing this in this video, you should have your calculator as well, and you should be doing this. All right? So y is this. No problem. Now remember, we want to get a point very, very close to this. 3 pi over 2 and now I know, <laughs> 3 times pi divided by 2 is 4.712. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a point, let's say 4.72. Okay? Okay? So I've gone ahead and done the calculations. Um, correction, um, when we do put 3 pi over 2 into this function, we get... Uh, negative square root 2. Okay, how did I get 4.72? Again, 3 pi over 2 is approximately 4.712, blah, blah, blah. So 4.7, sorry, 4.712. So 4.72, again, if it helps to put the zero here if you need to, I would hope that you would say that this, they are very close. Plugging this new x into our function, I get this new y. Again, don't round too early. Calculate your slope using the slope formula, change in y over change x. And I find that an estimate of this slope is about 1.42.
Hope that helps. Thanks for watching.